Hiya, today we're going to be looking at how our off-grid solar power system performed over winter. Hi, my name is Rachel and I live completely off-grid in this woodland with my family. My husband Fraser, our daughter Grace and the latest addition to our off-grid family, Albie, um, who is about three weeks old. As part of our off-grid setup, we generate our own electricity using solar panels. We have 20 LG 355 watt solar panels on the roof of our barn. We use the Victron Quattro 10 kVA 48 volt inverter. We have the Victron Serbo GX as well as MPPTs and Lynx power ins also from Victron. And we have seven Pylon Tech US 3000C batteries. We also have a generator which we use as backup and part of today's video we'll be looking at how much we relied on that through the winter. So we installed our solar power system in the summer of 2021 so this was the first winter where we've had it in place and this is how we got on. Okay so this is the current view of how things are looking this morning on our Serbo GX remote console. As you can see it is a beautiful sunny day in March and we're at 100% charge even though it's only 10.45 in the morning. That means that the PV charge is just trickling in, um, so that's not showing the full potential of what we could be bringing in, because once the batteries get near to being full, things really slow down and it just trickles in. You can see we haven't got much of an AC load at the moment, just about 175, 180 watts. So yeah, that's the general picture at the moment. Let's have a look on the VRM and have a look at the historic data for winter. So this is a view of the VRM showing the Serbo GX. Very similar picture to what the remote console shows us although I think that the remote console is more up to date I think the VRM lags slightly but not enough to be a problem when we are monitoring things when we are out as we can't access the remote console um, anytime other than when we're at home so we use the VRM instead so I had a look on the Victron YouTube channel earlier today and there was a video that came out earlier this week saying that they have some new updates on the VRM there's a new control switch which means that you can access some of the settings via that control switch rather than having to access them through the settings and there's also a dark mode as well. They say that the button for that should be appearing here. I'm not seeing it yet so I'm wondering if it's going to appear later on or whether I have to run an update or something, I'm not sure. So if we scroll down you can see the historical data for this month so far. We'll return to that in a bit once we've had a look at the winter data. So if I change this to the 1st of December and then we go to the end of February. Okay, so this is how it looked over December, January and February. So as you can see, we've got consumption shown in red, solar shown in yellow or orange, and battery shown in blue. So having a look at December, you can see that consumption was much higher than what we were bringing in for the solar. And you'll be able to see that in a bit more detail when we look at the consumption section, uh, which includes um, the generator as well. But this improves through January and February and we found that December was our worst month. So that's not a surprise considering the winter solstice is around that time and we had um, minimal daylight anyway. But the weather was particularly poor through December anyway, it was very grey and having had a look at some of the channels of other people who use solar, um, they were said the same, they said that December was a really poor month. So let's have a look at our consumption. A lot of people have been asking us how much we use a generator. I think with rising energy prices, people are starting to wonder if solar is a possible alternative for them but are concerned about winter which is understandable. So let's have a look at how we got on. So on this graph we have got consumption from solar in yellow, batteries in blue and the generator in green. So as you can see, like we said, December was our worst month and the month that we depended on the generator the most. And this improved drastically as we moved into the later months of January and February. This is particularly interesting considering that I started working from home after Christmas. So the house had been empty during the day through December apart from the actual Christmas break. But then in January I was working from home and using appliances within the house. And that meant that our load would have gone up a little bit. I wasn't using anything drastically different to how we would have done anyway, so it didn't have that much of an impact. But it's still interesting to note, considering the fact that we depended so much on the generator in December, even though there was nobody in the house during the day compared to January when I was here. So with December, I did discuss it with Fraser and we said on reflection that we really didn't modify our behaviour at all. And maybe that's something we could have done to keep our use of the generator down. 
so if you've seen some of our other videos you will know that we use appliances such as a washing machine and a tumble dryer we do that to make our life easier seeing as we both work and that isn't something that we stopped doing over December but maybe we could have timed it differently um, using the tumble dryer just on sunny days although there weren't many of those in December and perhaps that would have minimized the use of the generator we didn't feel the need to do that we didn't feel that the cost was having that much of an impact on us so we carried on as normal and that is the consumption that we had. Like I said, it's possible that we could have cut that down and that's something we might think about in future if prices continue to rise for fuel. Um, but over that point, it wasn't too bad for us. Another thing we're considering is um, adding a winter array of panels, um, maybe secondhand panels that we bring out during winter and have on the ground just to help ease this December and early January lull. So that's a breakdown of how much we use the generator through winter. Now let's just compare this to this current month. So as you can see, this is March so far and there's a big increase in the solar that's coming in. It's been lovely as well. We've had some really nice weather. And as you can see, we've only used the generator once this month um, so far on the 6th of March. And actually, had we hung out a little bit longer, it's possible we wouldn't have needed to because the solar really picked up over the next couple of days. Yeah, so that is drastically different to December and just goes to show how much difference those extra light hours make. And like I said, we're already fully charged at around 10.45. In fact, I actually looked at 10 o'clock this morning and we were already at 100%. So all in all, very positive. A couple of things to work on, possibly that winter array or um, modifying our behaviour through December so that we don't use so much power, so that we don't depend on the generator so much. But all in all, it was definitely a success. Thanks for watching this video. If you would like some more information on our solar power system, please have a look at the links in the description below. We have a video of the installation of the setup. We've also got a video talking about the cost. We have a video showing an overview of the system. We talk about fusing. We've got some videos on our batteries and there's lots of information that might help anybody who's looking to do their own DIY solar power setup. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comments section below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. For future videos on our solar power system and our off-grid life in general, please consider subscribing and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.